has established himself in the Ghanaian and international music scene as an artist who knows his craft and how to make the most out of it. He's someone who continues to attract high expectations from different people, but how well is he meeting those expectations? Chief Executive Officer of Success Music, Michael Wusuado, popularly known in showbiz as Sarkodia, is my guest tonight. He will be discussing, among other things, his music craft, his plans and projects for the youth, as well as his thoughts on leadership in Ghana and on the African continent. You are watching The Hard Truth. My name is Nana Akusia Kunedu Asante Samuels and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes and Dawa Industrial City. Welcome to The Hard Truth and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes and Dawa Industrial City. Michael Owusu Ado Sakodie is in the house. So Welcome girl. to the hard truth. Thank you. Thank you for having me. But your why not uh, Michael Ado and uh, why Sakoda? I, I used to I thought Sakoda was like your your last name or something. Um, it's actually an interesting story that I've always been saying. Um, I was I was pretty young and then my dad had friends. Right. I think bearing the name Sakode. Mm. And I don't know if it's coincidental, but they all kind of like were wealthy and they had money. And as a kid, I thought it was the name because I saw a couple of Sakodes outside as well, which had, you know, some kind of wealth. I were like living all right. Quite well. So I mm. thought, you know, it had an effect. Maybe it's true, but I think there's a broke Sakode somewhere. I don't know. But I just took the name based on what I saw as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, but you were not uh, rich then, so did you no. believe that, oh, okay, so if I take on Sarkodie, yes, one day I'll, I'll get there? Yeah, exactly. That's how I felt. The one day, one day, just bearing the name Sarkodie would help. So now, literally, anybody bearing the name Sarkodie, who are like the original Sarkodie, we are like brothers and sisters now. Wow, I yeah. see. It's good to have you. Thank you. Over the years, you have managed to develop yourself as a big brand in the music uh, industry, winning awards, uh, you know, in the process. You were listed among, I think, the most influential uh, uh, African uh, descent in 2017 under the global under 40 uh, global list. Let me ask you bluntly: How does it feel like to be influential? It's just two ways. It feels, it feels good in mm -hmm. one way, but I think in the most part, it's scary. You know, for the fact that you know people look up to you and take every detail of your life, you know, as a guide to theirs. You know, it's it's, it's a bit scary. That's what I would say. I think um, having influence, you can use it um, in a positive way, which I've been trying to do. But then again, mm. I'm human, you know. So then, it makes you be in a situation where, what if you know you disappoint all these people that look up to you? So it's good. It's a great feeling, and at the same time, I think it's scary. But being influential comes, as you said, with so many responsibilities and a lot more expectation. Yeah. Have you met them? Can I say you've met some expectations? I wouldn't know. I think it's, it's more of the people who... People look up to you in your community, your family looks up to you, you have role models elsewhere. So what do you think? Do you think you're meeting some needs at the end of the day? Needs? I don't know. I'm just being me for now. I don't know. I think it would be best for the people that I have effect on, you know, to have that conversation because I wouldn't know if, if I'm doing that. Hopefully, um, I wish I am actually, as you said, you know, fulfilling that mm. responsibility. Um, one thing I'm, I'm, I'm certain for sure is that I love family, so I'm a family-oriented person and I care about people. And there are certain things that get to me that I try to, you know, attend to. I'm, I'm one man, I can change the whole well, world. What gets to you? Um, it's a lot. You know, I like, um, I like to see people survive, you know, because I, I had it very hard. So I make sure that the best I can do, as in passing on information, as mm -hmm. in how people can survive, yeah. either, you know, go, not going through too much as I did, you know, so we start from family, you know, and to friends, to people, anybody I come across, you know, even in my industry, I just make sure that everybody, you know, can have the knowledge that maybe I've been able to acquire. I'm still acquiring, but I can give you what I have so far, you know, to make it a You're bit trying easier. Trying to give what you have so far, is it uh, monetary, is it advice, is it uh, support? Uh, in what form uh, does these things come? Um, I think giving out money is, is is cool but i think you need to teach the people how to make it so that's what i do normally do you give money at all i do yeah I've, I, I don't know if somebody doesn't you know but i think you're supposed to you know if there's mm. a situation where you have to you know if it's 
if it's if it calls for it then you have to do it are you with a school know? of thought that says that i went through the hard way i'm going to teach you the hard way i'm not going to give you on the silver platter do you do that sometimes you see then that's when you mistake the, the silver platter information mm -hmm. you know because silver platter is me showing you the way mm -hmm. You understand so not necessarily giving somebody money means you're giving the person the silver platter it's more of giving the information that you were able to do it so they don't go through it too much mm -hmm. so for me like if i meet somebody i make sure i give you my number one rule what i i didn't even know that i was doing but then when i finished and i realized this is what i did believing in my craft and staying true to it and not being confused that's in what i want and i want people to stay true to that so when they find you as in what you believe in you don't wake up pretending that's that's a key you know so for me for that information mm -hmm. given out for free i think that's in a way having it on, on a silver platter so not do, necessarily do you, do you giving out money you feel pressure to i need to prove myself i'm sacred yet do you feel pressured that way used to i wouldn't lie a mm -hmm. um, couple of years back you have to meet expectations and it's just natural as being human you know but i think for now it's more of um, things that i believe in myself you know what i see as a human at this stage mm. that I think is very necessary for me to do. So the pressure is not like uh, when I came in in the game for the first time, that was when the expectations were very, you know, very high. Mm -hmm. You need to continue. But I think now being there, done that, is more of what I want to do and the legacy I want to leave. Over the years, you have um, used some of your songs uh, to address critical gov uh, governance issues in the country. In your song, Inflation, you, yeah. you, you outlined certain issues like um, uh, paying off tariffs, high tariffs, government promising and not delivering, and so things like that. So I want to ask you, what, what is it that you expect our leaders to do that, you know, it gets you jittering? They are not doing it. The song, the song you just mentioned, I outlined certain things. Right. Me growing up now got me to think there is more to it than that. You know, that is even the, the results of a bigger issue, you know, that res resulted in this one. So that song definitely was the truth. But as at now and at this point in my life, what I'm thinking about the perception of what I think is supposed to happen. Um, I think we are supposed to go through an, an uncomfortable time, which even me and you are not ready for. Which so, is what specifically? What's uncomfortable times? Um, it's changing our systems. It's going to make us uncomfortable. We are not, we are not going to be able to um, slip through a queue to get things done. We are not going to be able to, you know, find a way to go about certain things and then get away with it. You know, when these structures are being built, it's going to make us very uncomfortable because we are used to. The system naturally creates people mm. to commit crime. That's what the system is being built on. So we are all being hypocrites when we're having a conversation about it because one way or the other, we all fall short of it. And it's not even intentional. The whole system makes it that way. Because mm. if I want to go by the right way, do I have the benefits that, that will work for me? Is this going to be just a phone call that will be done within an hour? No. If it's going to take me two years to get this done, if someone is telling me I can get it done in a day, I will do it. But can't we create a system again? That's, so that's what I'm saying. That, that you, something that takes two years can actually be done in a day, if exactly. that's possible. So, yes, when they do certain things, it's going to make people uncomfortable. Because the moment you start doing that, you need to start paying the people who do it well. I don't know if you, if you understand mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. So if it's me doing a passport, the people at the passport office are supposed to be paid well. So when they don't get paid, then they are frustrated. So when I give them money to make it today, they will do it. But, but Sakode, we talk about um, paying the right amount of uh, remuneration every time and, you know, paying high amounts. I mean, if you're an employer, employees expect you to pay. But if you still up their game or up their salary, they still want to get more. So isn't it about the, the greediness of, of our system, of, of how we are? I mean, can we, can we say that? Because, uh, of course, I mean, there's uh, some high tariffs or high uh, uh, amounts paid to them all the time. But yet, they want to get more. I feel that that has nothing to do with Africa. It has to do with human beings in general. Mm. But when the systems are tough, you think twice before you do it. You understand? Because doing something here in Ghana and knowing that you can get away with it, you wouldn't think twice about it. You would still do it. So imagine I took my grandma to the uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, she died in my car. You know, I got to the hospital. I asked, they bring, um, they, they come and get her. They asked me to go find um, a stretcher, to put her on a stretcher, to take her inside, right? Mm -hmm. And if I should um, complain about that, and that person is being sacked the same day, 
if that can happen, you know, that's even one structures that will make you feel like we are all in the states and you, you can go to London. They all they, we are all greedy. We would all want the cars. We all want the, the mansions. But because the system works there, it makes it a bit tricky. Even when you're doing it, you're thinking twice if you're caught. Mm. So if that can be, you know, uh, uh, the system's here. You know, the spirit of entitlement wouldn't be that much. People would like to fight and work in a legitimate way to, to you know, to make ends meet. Not long, long ago, sir, could your ace journalist Manasseh Azure uh, on uh, Joy FM uh, wrote an article titled Manasseh's Folder and how a shithole continent lost its rights and dignity. In his article, um, he said, and I quote, In 1957, when Ghana gained independence, our first president and champion of Pan-Africanism, Kwame Nkrumah declared that African was capable of managing its own affairs. Sixty years on, we have proved him wrong. Uh, the stories of how many African countries govern themselves are uh, replete uh, with barbaric tales of greed, mismanagement, and corruption. Now, do you think our leaders have failed us? And as a people, what role have we played in this? Hmm. Yeah, I like... Um... What you, what you just um, yeah, read? Manasseh's quote. Yes, um, I think we we are we all play part in it. I think. Let me let me use my career as yeah. an example, because I love what I do that much. Even me, I don't owe anybody uh, my relevance. Mm -hmm. You know, I can choose to be relevant, but when I think about the fans, right. It makes me put back every penny that I make into my craft. So when you said I've been relevant for a long time, it's because I put back into the craft. And that even makes it very hard for me to think about my personal needs. It took me time before I built my first house because I could have done it earlier, but I thought about it. I could buy a house and then maybe the money is, is gone at that point and I wouldn't have products for the fans. Mm. I felt for the fans. So what did I do? I put back into it, give the fans money, save a little, a little bit of it, keep it, start... I buy a land, maybe I start building. I'm, I want it, but I'm still trying to cater to people that consume the music. And that's the same thing with, with, with governance. If, if people in government can really love Ghana first, let's start from the love. If you don't have that love, you're having that personal agenda, that's the reason why you're coming in. That's why we have the problem. So maybe um, it might be the, the kind of people that we bring into it, or maybe when you get into it, the whole circle changes. I don't really know what happens, but I think that's true. Mismanagement has been, has been a key role, the reason why we are here. And I just wish we could love it. You know, you can, I'm not saying, I would even blame my dad if my dad is a minister, he doesn't save any money. You know, you can make money off every situation that you're in, but how do you, how, what's the margin? What are you looking at? What's your interest? Are you trying to build 16 houses because you're in governance now? If that's the issue, then we are all not going to, we are all not going to survive. Mm. But if you're going to think about Ghana, obviously you make profit. Even charity organizations make, make profit. So it's just the margin and, and the state of mind of what you are trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. You know, I'm thinking about a legacy. So I would juggle between both my personal life and then entertaining people. So as have well. our leaders failed us bluntly? Do you think they failed us? I don't I wouldn't say them, I think we all. As an individual yourself, uh, with an international voice uh, through your music, what personal uh, role uh, are you highlighting or playing in making sure that the, you know the highlights or the positives of Africa is, is uh, you know said out there? It's just the whole misconception of uh, people feeling like I think when they meet Africans, they have this state of mind. Um, they might not be that smart to you know to do certain things. That's that's one of the uh, the bad uh, conceptions that's out there with people thinking about Africa, that we can't do anything, that we need to come in before we can do it. You know, that's one thing I would like people to know, that I think we have individual people who are actually making Africa what it is. You know, a couple of names that you can mention, you can check on net, that we have contributed a lot, you know, to the world. So for that, I think we've, we've built certain people that can stand up to these people that we're trying to not necessarily impress but compete with um bottom line is we definitely have issues that we need to deal with the conversations we're having is based on how we can do it um until then we can have that full fight against them i, I watched the president um i've been talking to the the france oh, mm -hmm. the head of state for head france of state, yeah mm -hmm. and i like what he said what the president said you know that's that's exactly the truth it's just that when we say that, we need to be ready to take things into our hands, you know, and control things and make sure 
that uh, even in Africa, we have that situations where, you know, I saw MTV do the awards in, in, in certain areas. And then I think I asked somebody from, from MTV, I'm like, but why don't you do it here in Ghana? Mm. Um, they're like, yeah, it's cool, but we don't have, we don't have like a movement, anything going on here that makes it interesting. When you say Nigeria, obviously you have they the likes of, together, right? Yes, mm. you understand. So that's the same way Africa is supposed to do. You know, we're supposed to make this place where when you come in here, you need to spend money, you know, to come in because mm. we have, I go to places that people hype a lot in the, in, in the States, in the UK. Mm. And when I get there, it's really nothing. I think mm. we have beautiful places here in, in Africa that we are not highlighting on. I think we need to start to have the belief in Africa and, um, Back to it, change our state of mind and love it more. And then our actions should show that. So could, let's look at your song uh, in 2015, The New Guy featuring uh, American rapper uh, Eastwood. Yeah. Uh, your lyrics rolled out as this. And The New Guy made it from the slums back in Africa where most of my guests committed suicide. Yeah. You know, one might say your choice of lyrics seem to re-echo the kind of negativity out there. Mm. Couldn't that be the case? No. Um, people in America say the same thing. They say the slums. Mm. But we don't take it that way. That's what I'm saying. So we are supposed to work on ourselves. So certain things will not be too sensitive to us. You know, when I'm, I'm a creative person, you know, when I, when I was rapping, I was not thinking about Ghana or um, slum is just a slum. Mm. You can find a slum everywhere you go. So for us to be sensitive about no, that. If, if we are trying to project a certain Africa, a certain country, why yes. would you even say your niggas and, and slums and, and people committing suicide? Where you live in Tema, who committed suicide? <laughs> so is it a true reflection or is it just you saying anything? I mean, is it lies? Can I put it that way? Um, it will not be lies. I think doing music, you don't necessarily say the story about you because people can relate to the lyrics you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We have people who are from that that place i came from a place where i could i could use that figure of speech because i was near to death at that point mm. you know committing suicide at that point you know i said it in a song called now seven saga i was selling yam on the street so i know what i was talking about it was a point where you need to decide if you want to live or not that has nothing to do with uh me saying africa is a slum or anything i'm just saying my my life where i was at that point you know, that's how it felt okay. you know so and people can relate people on the streets whether you're from america or UK, we have places where you feel like that. So it has nothing to do with me projecting Africa in that in that light. Because there are certain songs that I make sure that I push my continent. But this is just this is rap. This is creativity. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Hard Truth and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes and Dawa Industrial City. Uh, Michael Owusu Ado Sakodia is still here. Sak. Your track, or in your track, No Coiling, uh, yes. the remix, you had some strong words uh, for President Trump regarding uh, his uh, shithole comments about Africa. You described um, him as not possessing any talent. So why did you use such <laughs> particular words as a rebuke? Oh, that line was just me being funny. There's, mm. there's this guy I like a lot, Tachi Palago. He's on, he's on Facebook. Mm. He, he used that. <laughs> I, think I realized video. it wasn't your voice. It was my voice. It was I your voice, said, yeah, I yeah. see. Um, he said that, and I thought it was, it was very funny <laughs> and interesting. Uh, I wanted to use that for, for Mr. Trump. Um, for, for my response to what he said, mm. obviously, I think when you speak to people, they, they all have two ways about what he said. You know, it wasn't necessary to, to use the word you know, for us. Um, I can see where he's coming from. I think the hard truth, as you're saying, is... We, we find it difficult to, to take the truth, as in we need to step up as, as, as a continent. We have to, um, I don't want to sit here, though I'm, I'm speaking to the world, but we still have issues that we need to, be, we need to deal mm. with. You know, so definitely he sparked a conversation and it's been things that I have been complaining about, not because we are the word, you know, shithole, we are not, you know, we just, have people that we, we are not good at management. I think we can work towards that. I think it, it will be better. 
you know, but for him to use the word for us, I think it was hurtful, and that's that's my response to it. That's well, how I feel. Do you think it was just um, um, an act to put us on our toes to actually think about it and and put our continent in order? From him? Yep. I don't know him personally, but for for the personality I've seen, you know, of him, I think he says it as he feels. Mm -hmm. You know, so he, I can believe he feels like that. You know, he might not know why. But I think he feels like that, and that's that's why he said it. Let's talk about you and your craft. In raps, you don't get the luxury to explain in full what you mean. So you pour out, uh, you know, your thoughts in brief, in clear manner. What goes into deciding the choice of your lyrics? And uh, for each song you do, you know, you expect your message to be understood differently by different people. Um. I'm the type of artist that recently I started doing the filter uh, situation with my verses. You know, I normally, I believe in that statement, mm -hmm. um, creativity thrives in freedom. I think as an artist, you need to be free enough, you know, to, to express what you feel. You might be wrong, you might be right, but you need to be free to express how you feel at that point. You know, so when I'm writing, I'm not necessarily thinking too much about, you know, not always about the effect, you know, but growing up now, um, so you just said the words without thinking of the effect it will have on people? Yeah, if, if that's how I feel at that point, you know, you, you'll say it. That's, that's how creativity works. But she works. did songs, uh, you know, uh, either inspire, I mean, the basics. That's what I'm saying. So it can be positive or negative. Mm. So if I'm inspiring, that's what I'll say. But if I have to talk about, like when I did the inflation and the masses and all, I think people were, were mad. I think people in government at that point w wasn't happy with me. I wasn't thinking about that, you know. I'm not thinking about you personally. It had no personal... Uh, connection. Connection. I was just saying how I felt. It came. It came at the dawn of, of the night. I I woke up. I wrote it. The next day, I recorded it. I was not thinking about somebody would be there. Is he talking about me? Oh, that's interesting. So you sleep, and then you wake up in the middle of the night. Is, is it depend on how you feel? So let's say you woke up on the very bad side, yeah. and you know you write bad songs, and then when you're excited, <laughs> you, can I say it can, that we excited? Like that. Mm. For, for for inflation, I think I was on YouTube and I was watching. I won't mention who, but there was, there's a, uh, an interview like this mm. talking about politics mm. and they were revealing a lot that got me sad, you know, because I really don't like, I told you from the beginning, I don't, I don't pay attention to politics because the conversations they're having, I don't feel like it can change anything, mm. you know, so normally I don't, I don't listen to it. But these two guys who were having a conversation were having a real conversation, you know, which is taking the politically correct kind of statements and dealing with what it is. You know, saying it the harsh way, and the tempers were like up there. But I was taking a lot from what they were saying, and I felt bad. You know, I'm thinking more of my my my, my grandchildren. Mm. I'll I'll be okay. Maybe I'll I'll die. But when they come, are they going to be safe? And that's when it, it pushed me to do you know those songs. So I had no. I even I don't even know who's in who's in government and who's doing what. But I would just say how I feel at that point. Somewhere last year, I think in July, uh, one George Mensah uh, Britain, I think a blogger who has turned into um, a media entrepreneur, you know, I, I think he made some comments on rhythms uh, uh, with uh, Bella Mundi. And he said, and I quote, he said that um, Sarkozy doesn't have enough competition in his territory. There are a lot of rap artists in Ghana. Yes, but none is giving Sarkozy a run for his money. Is that how you also feel? Do you feel you don't have no competition? Huh. Yeah, I think, not because I don't have, but maybe I don't focus on if I do have it, you know. So I maybe I do, but I don't, I don't know. He, he will be maybe the right person to, to say it, or anybody who's looking at me from the outside. Because I'm that type of person that my career is like me swimming. I don't get, I don't get up to see where I'm at. I'm just, I'm just going. So I don't really look at who is like Who's going past what? me. Mm. And I think you can go past somebody for two years. doesn't mean you've won, you know. So I don't believe in the whole competition. Has bit someone gone past you for two years? Do you think? I would know notice some? it because I wouldn't even see it. Mm. My philosophy has always been, I came in to meet people mm. and people were hailing Sarko there as the number one, which is like a performance on stage when they call you, you know, people scream. But then after 10 minutes, you need to give us a reason why we should be on our feet till you're done. And that's how music, the whole career is. So if you don't understand that concept, you find it very difficult to embrace any new 
era of anything that you have a problem you're like oh do I, did, did i fall off who who can be having that thing for for how long till you die but then what you stand for the truth what you stand for as you is what's going to make you you mm. when i came in it was more of the hype thing you know but now it's more of what i can do proving yourself proving myself you know so i'm not in that that type of conversation so that's that's maybe probably that's why my, my mind is not on that side but following on your choice of lyrics some section of uh, the Ghanaian pop leagues believe that uh, manifest your biggest uh, uh it's your biggest nightmare i mean in Ooh. terms of manifest oh, it's your okay. biggest nightmare <laughs> in terms of you know construction yeah. uh weaving poetic languages and all of that yeah. is it indeed your biggest competition and you know considering your individual backgrounds do you find uh, uh you know such comparison out of context no um you have to be very deep to be in my in my in my field to survive in this game has nothing to do with talent is, is talent plays like i would say 10 percent mm. the 90 is your state of mind and how strong you are mentally and that is what has kept me to date if you understand what you're into your approach is different we don't have the best rapper. I'm sorry. I'll say it. He will say it. You will say it. As you will be the best presenter to you and the people who love you. Mm. Anybody who sees you and feels like you're not good, you have not won that person. So you're not the best to her or mm. him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what we all focus on, why I don't lose is because if I see a bunch of people who love Manifest and you don't understand it, then you have a problem. Anybody that you're trying to compete, there's somebody in front of the person. Or the only way you can work is being content and knowing what you stand for. Mm. You know, you're not going to be the only one doing it. There are going to be lots of people doing it. But you need to concentrate on who you are impacting. And that's when the SAC Nation, the Sacaholics, the SAC Natives come in. Those are the people I focus on, you know, and trying to build. But then I, I do commend anybody else that comes, that comes into the game. And people feel like I'm, I'm afraid of competition. It's because of my understanding of it. I only do it because I want it to be fun, but real, realistically, it doesn't change anything. But, but Sarko, how do you feel when you hear people say that, um, um, Sarko, you leave this young person alone and let him thrive by himself? You want to take his shine in yeah. court. How do you? How, how does that get to? Does it get to you? Let me put it that way. Does it get to you? All this conversation mm. comes under what I'm saying. My state of mind is different. Mm. The same people, if I don't help anybody and I'm on my own, would say Sarko is selfish and he doesn't want to touch any young kid he's scared of this young kid so he doesn't want to get close to him he doesn't want to do a feature with this person i've been there done that i've been through that emotions and understood that i need to do what i have to do what i feel like doing i'm that type of person that if i'm on youtube and watching this video and it gets to me and i like it i would like to share for everybody to see it i don't care even if i don't know the person i will do it i will put it out and tell people to go and watch it i don't care because that's the ultimate confidence that you have as a person, if you are not confident, is that conversation a non-starter? Do you think it's a non-starter? I mean, you're trying to help someone, and then that notion he's trying to ride on his fame to get himself out there again. Um, it nearly got to me when I was a bit younger in the game mm -hmm. that I wanted to say, okay, no, now I'm not going to do anything for anybody. I'm just going to be. No, I'm not even doing anything for anybody. I understand it that because I've been there before, so I don't take it as I'm helping you. It's, it can be both ways, you know, you have seven people listening to you, but then I put you on my platform, still those seven people will admire what I've done. But that's not even, not, that's not even the notion, but I understand if somebody would say that. But my whole idea is, I, I knew what I felt when I was younger. I wanted a Bradford to put me in a song. Mm. I wanted Reggie to put me on a song. When I saw Samini, I wish Samini could do a verse on my song. I, I know how that feels like. So if I'm here, I can relate when I see the young ones out there. I will not be able to do it for everybody, but anybody that I can, I will do it. So it's up to you and what you use that situation for, but I don't end that. I'm not God. But my intention of doing that is just me feeling like how I used to feel way back and then I feel for them. That's why I do it. And I decided not to do it, but thinking about it, that's me losing. You know, I'm, I stand for myself. So if I choose to help, I will. If, if I don't feel like, I wouldn't pretend like I like something. A large part of um, the music business is out, you know, thinking your competition and coming up with um, unique uh, ways to do things that will get the attention of others. How difficult, Sarkoli, or easy is it for you to actually stay relevant and ahead of your competition? Like, like what I'm saying now, any artist will keep it to themselves. I feel that's, that's how I am. I feel like 
If I meet other artists, you can ask them. I talk too much because I want you to get where I'm coming from. I think people are lost in the wrong things. You know, they'll say, um, if I didn't have a strong mind, I wouldn't be here. It has nothing to do with having a hit song. I said in my new song, Overdose, you know, my, people say relevancy depends on your hits. I don't believe that. My last biggest song was Adonai. And still Sarko Day is here. So my, my state of mind has not necessarily been how people feel, like you need a song. They, they, need to, they need to be playing your song to be relevant. You know, I will still command the numbers even without the newer song. Mm. And those state of mind is what the new ones are supposed to have. You know, you need to stand firm, not to be moved by anything that's happening, which is very, very hard. It is very, very hard. It makes it hard. Is it the... You're human and you're, you're in tune with your emotions. Is, is it that your songs won't get played and other, other songs are played much more than yours? That can be a factor. That can make you lose, you know, because then you feel like you've lost it. Like you go to the club and, and... But you're not being realistic. You don't have... You don't know what you're about to lose. Like, I can go to the club and they'll play major, major songs and people will bump into it. They might not play mine. Initially, it would get to me because I was young. Mm. But now my understanding is, I don't want to say any song, I don't want to diss anything, but you, there are songs that you, you like, but you wouldn't care meeting the person, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you might not hear a certain song in a club, but that same person, when you meet the person outside, you appreciate the person's work. But how do you know? I mean, people look at you, they smile, but do you know what's in their head? No, but... How do you know? <laughs> you, you would know... Response, of, uh, you, you, if you get out, you know response and the, and the feedback you get as a product. It's like you're putting a product out. This, this interview, when you put it out, the feedback you get is what you're going to be writing on. Mm -hmm. Whether the truth or not, is the energy you're getting. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So exactly, when I put music out or when I go out, the energy I get is what I, I base on. Even if they are pretending, thank them, they need to, they need to keep on pretending because that keeps me going. You know, so I feel the connection is there. Um, people do care about the brand, and that's very important to me. It's not really about because uh, what what when you say competition in my field, it's not real. It's not. That, no, it's not real because that means whoever has the hottest song is the one who who will win. It doesn't For how work long? That way, right? It, that, it doesn't really work. Now. Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't. But really but work. you strived again to achieve success despite the challenging uh, situations. Uh, you know, taking cognizance of your background. Yes, on. Rumors started pouring out associating you to the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. How deeply, Sarkodie, were you hurt or did that have on you, wear out on you on your success, you know, watered down to uh, the supposed links to Illuminati? I take it in a positive way. For you to call me Illuminati, what am I really doing? That's what I said in Illuminati. Me, Illuminati, and coming to a dime Hawaii. Mm. You understand? So for you to make that comparison to, should tell you where you are. So when you look at the, the negative side you'll be worried i was worried more for people who cared about me know what know what what was said about me mm -hmm. about uh you know family members who fell down and they they it got to them you know that was the only reason why i did the song you know but i didn't read personally i don't care i think it's a it's a good situation to be in for people to feel like there's something more than there's talent that can make you who you are a number of your songs uh present address uh, adversary or advisory notes for the uh, Ghanaian youth and perhaps across the globe. Your hand to mouth track is a classical example of the need to factor in investment and proper financial yeah. management uh, for youthful stages. Do you think that the youth in the country have a deep understanding of how to create and take advantage of opportunities uh, as they come? For where I'm from, as in Ghana, I think we have a long way to go with, with understanding money and understanding wealth. Um, we all don't know. I wouldn't say, because I'm, I did the song, people were like, oh, so you think you got it all figured out. No, I'm doing the song as a therapy. Not because, because I'm young, I'm not done with life. So, but that conversation came from my uncle. He's done, you know, he's doing the 20 now. I'm not, I'm not at the 80 yet, you know. So when he's having that conversation, he's a funny guy. And he used that statement when I was like, coming up. He's mm -hmm. like, hey, mm -hmm. sit down out to my ear, no I'm 80. 29 kind of hand to mouth. So when I hear that line, I'm like, I'm going to do a song with it. So not necessarily because I've got it figured out and I'm telling people to do it. I just feel like we all should know this advice and start. Um, I think there's time for everything. We have the strength now to make um, the best that we can. We should use our energy uh, not to focus on uh, the parties and, and taking trips elsewhere. Because I would always say, would you want to live rich, die broke or 
live a bit broken and you know die rich i would prefer the other one because when you're old that's when you think a lot you know that's when you need the comfort that you need so make sure you're preparing that day that when you can't be soccer you can't be performing you can just sit down and still take trips to the states and not hustle too much go buy whatever you want to buy sit in you know the the best the best cars coming that if that's what you're into i think you need to prepare towards that day so that's the 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 conversation I was trying to have in, in the hand to mouth. Um, again, I can't. I'm not in the in the fans' life, so I wouldn't know. But from the feedback I get, I think they take what I say serious, and and they they really work on that. I, I have friends who tell me that now when they go to the club, it's hard for the, for them to buy champagne when they remember what I said, because they start to do the calculation and see how many cement bags that can that can mm. buy. You know, so that's it's, it was funny, but then it makes you think. So. Um, the impact, I think, is, is there. I actually have a new song um, coming out that I'm addressing, you know, our state of mind as, as black people. I think it starts from there. I want to change. I, wanna, I, I might not be able to be the only one to do it, but I would like to spark that conversation of us changing how we feel and what we think is necessary. Because now we're all being judged by the cars we drive and, and uh, the shoes we wear and how you, you smell. You know, so when, when you're trapped in these situations and you don't know what to do with money, when you get it, that's the first thing you want to go in for, to impress people. But then you, when I came out with my first album, I was living with mom still. And that was a conversation where people were like, Anasako de Epana, de na. you see the talks. And if you're not a strong person as I am, you will fall for it. And you want to live to please them, to make sure that they don't say that because, ah, maybe we'll scare, we'll scare my account tomorrow. I'll show you, I can, I can go and rent a house in East Lebanon. You know, but then I will leave and regret that. And I, if I come back to Tema, can you imagine what the conversation will be? Mm. So it's, it's a time that you need to devote. If you're not ready for it, you're not ready to live. Because if you want to impress these friends, and it's not about what you wear, it's what you think. So it's just you. You are there looking at the future like this. It's only you that sees it. You want to have mansions. You want to do this, but it takes work. So basically, that's the conversation I'm having. And hopefully, it can, it can spark a change in how we think. And... Um, yeah, we will have a better place to live because I, I think that's also part of the reasons why we, we attack people a lot about our problems because we can solve it. You know, Kufo had a very great conversation when we went there. He was talking about us taking things into our hands when you go to the States. These places that we adore, that we want to go and see, some, most of them were not done, done by the government. It was done by individuals and people with visions and then they created it. So if the young ones can have visions, we can change, you know, um, the world. we right back. Welcome back to The Hard Truth and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes and Dawa Industrial City and uh, Sarkodie is still here but, but Sarkodie really, uh, how do you get your lyrics? How do you say them? It's, I, I try to do just a line and it's like I need the grace of God to actually do just one <laughs> small line. How do I say them? Is it in Simhunu in your mind or Africa. what? Yeah. Um, I think it was... I start from being a poet, I think, you know, being able to put words together. And I can't, I can't be able to explain it because I feel like it's normal. I don't know why you can't do it. But when you say you can't do it, then I, I see how hard it is. But because it comes to me easily, it's hard to explain. You know? because it, it feels like me, you asking me, how do I talk? How, how come I talk? You know, it's like that. You're right, the flex. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> But your record label success music has so far, I think, signed a uh, young artist, Aqua Boy, and that's a uh, strong, strong man. This year, how many um, new artists uh, do you hope to sign? And are you having some ongoing talks in this direction? For me, I would wish um, to help and, and sign a whole lot of artists. It was but, a challenge. Um, I'm, I've, I've only taken this role because we don't have labels in Ghana. And... Who can do it if not us that's been able to get to this level? We need to give back. That's the only reason why we set up labels. So I, I see people talk about, oh, you know, success is not a music label. Yeah, I can, I can agree. I'm an artist, but I'm just trying to help. And the only way I can help is to set up a label to help. So I've not... What, what, what do you give them? So when you sign someone on, is there like some huge amount of money you give? Do you, what do you do? I give a good deal as in what I would expect from... Uh, a label. So give me a deal. Let's say Akusia, um, something. Akusia. I would want you to come in as a partner. Okay. 
Because Akwabua is not actually an artist on, on, on success. He's a partner. Um, everything that he has, he still has a percentage till he dies. Mm. I'm not trying to rip anybody off. I'm not in the business of... I'm doing business, but because I'm an artist, I can relate with how artists but feel. But you actually give them some down payment, take 50 million down. I, what I, would, I have a budget for your project. And that's what I'm saying. For, for a label who has money set down to just take artists, they can give you a million, they can give you 500,000. Mm. I'm not on that level. I'm just trying, you know. To help. To help. So, but, but Xylophone Media seemed to be on a crusade uh, to sign top musicians uh, yeah. in the country last year. I think they signed Becca, Stoneboy, Kumi Guitar, you can name them. Tawali was recently uh, uh, signed on the label in, uh, I think, three-year contract or something mm -hmm. like that. What do you make of the crusade of, uh, you know, by Xylophone Media? I, was, I think I was one of the first people to comment them on, on, on my page on Twitter. Mm -hmm. For a long time, I've been talking about this, for people to believe in, in the creative arts and wanting to invest, because I think people see that to be a place not to go. What does it, it doesn't even make sense to them. You're, you're doing music, and how can you invest money? Nobody believed in it. I've tried with people that I know have money, but they would rather choose real estate over entertainment. Music. Over music. So for, for Mr. Pierre coming in, you know, at this point, and at this point, we actually needed that, you know. So hopefully... Uh, the right structure. Why at this point emphatically? What's happening at this because point? Because at this point, Africa is taking over mm. and we need to be part of that whole, you know, invasion. You know, I think, let's be realistic. Nigeria has been doing quite well, you know, and it's all because of good investment. You know, these guys, they, they still sign artists. To date, all Ghanaian artists have been doing it on our own and we are still competing with them. Why don't we have that you know, strong effort or collaboration, movement, moving together to push Ghana there? I've asked this question with Nigerians. I asked them, why do you guys like to collaborate? It's very, it's, Nigeria is very huge. So if Olamide doesn't jump on a Whiskey song, mm. Whiskey might not get that song to enter the Olamide territory. Mm. So you will need to collaborate. You have to do that. It's like, I did a song with Fancy Gadam and the whole of Temale will be after the song. So that's when collaborations come. So they do that. And aside that, we, the musicians in Ghana, have done our best, and we are still doing it. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm commending Xylophone. To date, we have not had five strong Ghanaian artists on the same platform outside Ghana. I did the Apollo with my friends. I took everybody along, um, and it was self-financed by myself and my partner in, in, in U.S. And nobody would believe. I didn't do that for money. The things I saw, as in having all of us, me, Shatawale, that's what I see. I want all of us to be on the same platform, mm. Stoneboy. That's the way we can invade. But it doesn't happen because if I have to do it, Shatawale might have to come. I might not be able to pay the amount of money that he wants, but we just need to do it together. But it's also work at the same point. So if somebody, and that's when the corporate world, the, the businessmen can come in, you know, you shouldn't be scared. This one Africa concert that you're doing and people are complaining, oh, it's all Nigeria. It's a Nigerian guy doing it. So... Why do you complain? And people say they don't play my music on Trace Niger. It's, it's a Niger franchise. So until we have people, the artists are doing perfect. That's why I said I thank Xylophone for coming in. Um, hopefully they we invade, you know, together. The man, I'm pretty sure he can put up a show in London, the O2, and bring Shatter, myself, Stoneboy, R2Bs, Bisake Day, name it, everybody in Ghana on the same platform. And we have the numbers to pull the crowd. So we have done it. It's still frustrating because we're still flipping from day one. And that's what makes it just you, you, because you need to survive. Mm. So if they can take the burden off the artist, we will be free enough to come together to do it. And big up to Xylophone. Hopefully we have people more coming in, you know, to support. Because you need to commend Ghana. We have been doing this on our own. Have you received any offers from Xylophone Media to sign no. on to your label? No, not yet. Okay, but, but will you accept a deal from them? Oh, not yet. So maybe there will be some conversation later in future. But when um, it comes, will you sign to Xylophone Media? I don't know the conversations they've been having with the artists that they have on board. We have not had a conversation yet, you know. Uh, I think working, work, working doesn't necessarily mean you have to be under the label. I think you always, if me being under the label, there's structures that we need to put in place that we will do, you know. I'm, I'm in talks with a guy. Um, he invited me to his house. Um, it's, it's more of the industry. It has nothing to do with Sarko there personally. You know, I would wish, you know, the industry moves. That's if you see my tweets, I'm always. But I get, about, I'm asking you personally if he approaches you as Sarkozy to be a part of his label, would you will you sign that contract? That's what I'm saying. That with my business, there is a whole breakdown of how things work. If everything ticks 
and it makes sense. Goal. Yes, that that can be a goal. Because like, I've turned down um, deals from outside Ghana that I know people would freak out if you do turn out a deal like that. But I'm thinking of what are we doing? You know, if if I understand what we're doing, and is that the right direction? I'm I'm up for it. But you're a great artist, but it seems that um, many people have problems with your personality. Some describe you as being arrogant, disrespectful, yeah. and so on. Why is this the case? Um, I don't know. I think Jay-Z had a perfect line. He said, if everyone else is saying this about me, and you think they're crazy, then that means you're the one insane. So if it's a lot of people saying the same thing, no matter how you feel they're wrong, it's how they feel and then what they feel you have towards them, the, the, the reaction they get from you. So maybe I might not be the typical, the attitude you expect from an artist when you meet them. Um, in certain situations that people call me arrogant, that I can testify to mm. what happened, why they call me arrogant. If I explain that, I don't see that, that as arrogance. It's just having an opinion in a way. Where I'm from is, is automatically called arrogance. You know, because if I sit in a board meeting and you say something, I'm like, if it doesn't make sense, the moment I say, I don't feel like this makes sense, they tend that to be arrogant. Mm. You understand? But, but so, how well do you relate to um, other musicians in the industry? Um, I really don't have friends, friends, because I'm not a friend person. It has nothing to do with the industry. Naturally, I don't have like tight, close friends. Mm. I'm more drawn to, you saw me the last time with mm, um, mm, Prof. prof. prof like that, those are the type of people that I can uh, kind of relate. I want to learn something from them. So I don't really have friends, friends. Um, so it's not like a relationship. I think it's based on if we have to work, you know, we work. If we have anything to talk about, we talk about. If we develop a friendship, a natural friendship, yeah, that, that I can keep up. But I don't feel like I have a relationship with people. Like, yeah. Last year, we had uh, Freddie Mayway coming out saying that you disrespected him. Who? And of course, Freddie Mayway. Freddie Mayway, yes. Right. But of course, you came out to apologize to him. And we later uh, had Yemi Aladeyi also making some allegations of unfair, unprofessional, yeah. uh, and unkind treatment on your part regarding the collaboration. This isn't a good brand for you, isn't it? Um, you need to be ready, you, <laughs> especially when you're there. You need to be ready for these things that will happen because I used to hear stuff about Daddy Lumba till I met him, mm. you know, and especially if you are the one. What people don't understand is I normally speak to people that don't want to meet me halfway. You know, it's like you have made it and you need to do it for me. Like anything that you have to do to, to make it for me, just do it for me. If I'm shooting a video where it doesn't fit your brand, I, you shouldn't care because I need it at that point because I'm underground, I'm trying to make it. First and foremost, if I did a verse for you and I want us to meet at a point, I'm still being seen as unprofessional and you don't want to do this. You don't, I'm not talking about Freddie Mayweather, I'm just talking in general. We have most problems I've had with people. And this, is, this goes back to, do I even do stuff for people or no? Because when you do it, then it turns a problem. If I want more and I can't get but, it, but he said do a this. collaboration. He gave you a con uh, no. Fred Mayweather yeah. is a whole different conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's even my, my brother-in-law would testify to this, Mister uh, Moses Fuamweni. You know, he was like keen on me to get the record done. He sent me a song. I'm a creative person. The songs that I can do within seconds. If you mm -hmm. send no kissing with Paturanke, was like five minutes. When I heard the beat, it just it just it just came like that. Mm -hmm. When Freddie Mayweather sent me the song, it was a very, very deep song that I cannot just go on my regular circle and just say anything and just send it to him. Mm -hmm. I had to really zone into it. I have songs that takes me two years to come up with the lyrics. Glory on, on my on my album. I've had the beat for a long time. It came in traffic when I was in Nungwa and I had to park by the roadside to write it. So sometimes I need the inspiration to come. I have beats that people will testify. So his song was very deep that I needed time. But what I, I didn't know how to communicate that that was my side, to tell him that, to say, because um, I, kept, I kept saying I'm on it, mm. I will do it. But I can understand that he's like, what, what is this boy up to? Like, you're just, it's been how many months? Mm. What are you doing? But seriously, till date, if I listen to the song, I don't know how to even start it. I so see, but, but, but what of Yemi's? Because she, I mean, when you had allegations, you said you were on toy in London and you didn't. Yeah you know, give your side of the story. You indicated at a time you would 
rather wanted to wrap up your tour and then get back home to actually look at the yeah. issue and then address this. Um, did the event happen as, uh, you know, Yemi uh, enumerated or described it? I, to date, I'm talking to my team about it, if it actually did happen. But for my side, I don't know. But I, I would still say sorry to, um, to her because my lawyer will always say you can't go to the court and say that was not your intention, you know how the person feels is most important at mm. that point but i wouldn't do a song with somebody and not want to you know continue especially with someone like yumi aladi you know so but i don't remember i'm sorry what she is talking about but i know it happens on a daily basis with i do features you know there are certain features that no, nobody heard anything about i was i still delivered to to the end if i didn't with yumi best thing i can say is sorry you know but i had no intention you know and i still don't know wherever she is i'm, I'm very sorry but you, you seem to approve of uh, Ebony so much. And one of your tweets uh, on 14th of September in 2017, you know, Ebony, you said that Ebony is a very good artist in, uh, you know, 100 vocals. Uh, is there any collaboration on the line with, with Ebony? Yeah, we did a song, but I think we, we need a right song. Um, that was, it's, it's a good song, but if it's going to be me and her, it has to be that song. Mm. You know, until I hear that, you know, it's like when people say, don't you have a song of whiskey? Why don't you want to record? I, we, I have a song of whiskey, but I felt it wasn't, it has it nothing to do up. with mm. who, how big you are. Or if I feel like it's, it, it's not a song, I'm not going to put it out because we have to make an impact. So until we have that, um, I think we'll do it. But aside that, I think she's just good uh, mm. at what she's doing. But, but Ebony's personality, dressing, moral conduct and choice of lyrics seem to offense sections of the, of, the, of the public and in reply to your tweet uh, mentioned earlier on one gentleman said that I like um, her very much but her um, the way she dresses brings about some negativity around her will eventually bring her down one of these days so what is your thought on this does that bother you that's her personality <laughs> the way she appears and all of that does it bother, bother you? me no no I don't think that bothers me I don't I our life as I don't notice that because obviously she 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 presents herself in a seductive way. Mm. Um I think it's art and it's business, you know, so that's her strategy and that's what works for her. Um I don't I don't see anything too, wrong with that. Too too wrong with it, you know. I think and the good thing is she is actually using that in a positive light, you mm. know. She's empowering uh, women, she's using some of the music, you know, to to inspire as well. I think people people tend to miss the message of what artists stand for you know what they are trying to do with it you know exactly with with shatawali people complain all the time but his strategy to get his point of view across is how he does it mm. you know so if you don't understand it you're always having a problem but you're still listening to shatawali you know that's the same thing so all artists to me i'm yet to see someone who's like totally totally wrong but I think so far, everybody's just been in their lane and using their but, own strategy. But this is a very serious question that I'm going to ask. When are you writing a song about me? You mentioned Akusi Akunis. When, when is that happening? When do you want that to happen? Um, and what my, do you want me to say? On my birthday, I don't know, 12th of April. We're yeah, married. So? So I should just talk about you and your husband. Well, but I, I need a song. Can you tell me some problems in your marriage? <laughs> <laughs> That would be that would be a but great really, concept. So so on the twelfth of April you are writing a song about me. Okay. Right? Okay. Good. And you want us to drop it on the fourteenth? Uh, no, on the twelfth of April, my birthday. You said I should write it on the twelfth. And then release it that the same, same day. day. Anyway, you can write it before, but it should be done. Uh, you know, it should be released on the fourteenth, uh, the twelfth of I'll April. See what I do. Yep. Okay. Okay. So watch you. out for uh, my <laughs> song by Sarkodie uh, on the. Uh, 12 of April. But Sakura, they want to give us a line. I like Pateran King's raps. So maybe you can give me. Sarkodie for you. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think of Sarkodie? Um, send us your comments on our social media platforms on your screen right now. You've been watching The Hard Truth. My name is Nana Akosia Knedu Asante Samuels, and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes and Dawa industrial city catch a repeat of the program tomorrow morning 9 to 10 a.m thank you so much for watching have a good night